to two groups in this country, patriots and traitors. No middle ground. Disinformation is not simply lies or falsifications. It is the art of having your enemies say what you want them to say. Who would engage in espionage on Twitter? Who would be that stupid? Not me. It's very important to educate people about these techniques. They have the Great Reset, we have the Great Awakening. Another type of active measure is the agent of influence. And why shouldn't I root for Russia, because, which I am? You know, it's very hard for journalists to accept that this has been going on. What do you get your opinions from, TV? This information is actually a deliberately distorted or manipulated information that is uh, leaked into the communication system of the opponent with the expectation that it would be accepted as genuine information and uh, influence either the decision-making process, for example, or to influence or manipulate public opinion. I want to see these people go through misery because of their grooming against our children. Some questions remain unanswered. What is the effect of all these active measures? I did nothing wrong. Welcome to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, where we cut through the noise and help you make sense of the chaotic information space around us. I'm Griff Somke. And I'm Jay McKenzie. On this episode of the Did Nothing Wrong podcast, we're thrilled to have one of our favorite people with us again. Jared Holt is a senior research manager at the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, working on the topics of hate and extremism in the United States. He has authored definitive research and investigative reports scrutinizing the overlap between technology and U.S. political extremism. Jared frequently provides expert commentary and analysis to national media outlets and policymakers, helping to educate public audiences and institutions about the subject matter he examines. Prior to joining ISD, he worked at the Atlantic Council's DFR Lab, Right Wing Watch, and Media Matters for America. His journalism work has been published in The Washington Post, The Daily Beast, Columbia Journalism Review, and HuffPost. We're thrilled to have him on with us again today. So there was a tragic incident in Utah recently. On Wednesday, April 9th, an elderly gentleman by the name of Craig DeLue Robertson was killed by the FBI after making threats towards President Biden and New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg. An FBI spokeswoman said, quote, the incident began when special agents attempted to serve arrest and search warrants at a residence. The subject is deceased. The FBI takes all shooting incidents involving our agents or task force members seriously. Now, we should probably warn you that the content of the threats that he was posting on social media were pretty violent and dark. Dark enough that Truth Social, the beacon of free speech owned by Donald Trump, was actually the social media platform that warned the FBI about this individual. The QAnon memes, the sending everyone to Gitmo, the mass executions, Truth Social says, meh, but this guy they turned in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting because it it shows you that they are watching for this, or at least like somebody on the website is reporting this to moderators. That's like the least amount of what is happening here. But it's very interesting. Everybody thinks they're going to make the free speech platform and then they make it. And at some point there's the, you know, oh shit moment that happens, right? Right. right. Yep. Happened to Gab, happened to Parler. Now evidently it's happened to Truth Social. They saw this R. guy. RIP, Parler. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Parlor. Poor They're one out for that. Woke. <sighs> what are you going to do? Apparently not true social. Yeah. So according to court documents, the suspect made Facebook posts threatening the life of President Biden, who actually happened to be in Utah on Wednesday, August 9th. Quote, I hear Biden is coming into Utah, digging out my old ghillie suit and cleaning the dust off the M24 sniper rifle. Welcome buffoon in chief, read one of Robertson's Facebook posts. I don't know if the average person knows what a ghillie suit is, but it's it's the <laughs> full on camo like you're a sniper. You ever seen one of those movies where it's a, the sniper in Vietnam and he's basically hanging out in the jungle for three days trying to get his target? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's wearing a ghillie suit. That's that's what we're dealing with here. So you can say, oh, it's a joke or just, oh, we, we, he didn't really mean it. He's an old man, all this. But he had lots of guns. I've seen the pictures. Lots of guns. I don't mm -hmm. know how many. He had a ghillie suit. He clearly knew how to fire the guns, which is really all it takes to kill someone. So, yeah, they, they took it seriously. And after Robertson threatened other government officials like Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, they had to do something. 
he said about Bragg, he said, I want to stand over Bragg and put a nice hole in his forehead with my nine millimeter and watch him twitch as a drop of blood oozes from the hole as his life ebbs away to hell. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, I'm thinking whatever passes for a moderation team over at Truth Social, they saw that and they're just like, this this isn't going to look good if this guy turns out to be serious. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah and i just want to say before we keep going everybody owns a ghillie suit jay mm-hmm. you're the one who's weird we all wear it mm-hmm. every night when we go to bed absolutely but not all of us post like this online when you're cycling are you actually are you wearing a ghillie suit is that your preferred uh... yeah it has less to do with aerodynamics and more about <laughs> stealth <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't want them sneaking up on you you don't want them feds coming up on you while you're trying to you know do a century ride it's an important quality when you're riding a bicycle next to cars that they don't see you. <laughs> Very yep. important. Yep. You know, they can't hit you if you're not actually there, right? Something like that. Yeah, we're we're really glad that Jared joined us before a, a bus came his way and this is probably going to be his last recording, but uh yeah, we, we appreciate him showing up here. <laughs> yeah, hope, hopefully this works out. Anyway, Thanks, buddy. Uh, so uh, according to CNN, FBI agents, sorry to move on so quickly from my impending death here, but uh, (laughs) according to CNN, FBI agents approached Robertson at his house in March about a social media post. Investigators disclosed this in an affidavit. Robertson, according to this affidavit, would not speak to the agents, saying it was in a dream. We're done here. Don't return without a warrant. Generally not a bad way to handle the cops, but uh, after the interaction, (laughs) Robertson allegedly repeatedly threatened FBI agents online. One of those Facebook posts included in the court documents reads, to my friends in the Federal Bureau of Idiots, I know you're reading this and you have no idea how close your agents came to bang. 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 Whoo. Wow. I'm I'm shaking over here. I'm. Definitely shaking. I don't, I don't even work for the FBI, despite all the allegations from people like Glenn <laughs> Greenwald or whatever. Uh, we don't believe that. But nah. Yeah. He's got to say that, folks. He's got to mm-hmm. say that. It's the standard disclaimer about these things. And what's really kind of scary about this whole thing is that investigators noted that Robertson does appear to own a, quote, sniper rifle, unquote, and several other firearms. So it's not as if they didn't have anything to worry about with this. Yeah, it, maybe it's kind of a joke and maybe he's kind of trying to get a rise out of FBI agents, but common sense really wasn't in play here. And at a certain point, they have to take it seriously. And the FBI now says that he pointed a gun at them when they showed up. What do you think is going to happen when you have guns, you make threats, and then you point a gun at the people you just threatened? But, ah, uh, well, that, you know, nevertheless, he is... He is now a martyr, and all of our favorites were comparing this to Ruby Ridge and Waco immediately, Mm -hmm. which this is not that. No, it is not. But that is their go-to. I think of the Waco and Ruby Ridge comparisons, I think were probably some of the, like, more deranged reactions. I feel like, you know, after stuff like this, because unfortunately, like, this just seems to happen every few months something like this happens right you know the jack posobiaks and charlie kirks of the world the tim pools of the world they're just like you know pavlovian dogs or like lab rats right that like learn if they push a button they get a treat so then like the next crazy like maga guy gets arrested or gets you know shot by the cops and they just run over to the button and like bang on it a bunch and Mm -hmm. like hit it harder and harder every time it's just so it's like sad to me to watch. I should probably feel differently about it because like that kind of reaction, I feel like kind of begets or like encourages more of this. But it's just like sad to me. I just see like these little like slobbering dogs ringing the bells, like trying to get their engagement up. And the thing is, the guy's like Mr. Robertson here. He's 73, I believe. And he obviously had this sort of active fantasy life going in his head. His neighbors claimed that they'd never heard of any of this stuff. They had no idea he was like this. He's spending too much time on the internet. Seems like he's a little out of touch with what's real and what isn't real. And we can tell by the people he was threatening. 
and the threats that he was making, what kind of propaganda he was consuming. We know he was posting on True Social, and we know what, as Jay said at the beginning of the show, True Social is prepared to let through the filter. So you got this guy who is completely just bug fuck in his own world. And there's a group out there of people that are just weaponizing that over and over, just trying to push you, Jack Posobiec, your Charlie Kirk's. They want to see this happen. They're using references like Ruby Ridge and Waco to see if they can push that button over and over and over again. And they're going to keep doing it. It's just interesting to me because there's so many absurdities here. And, but one thing, okay. His neighbors say he didn't know what he was posting on social media. I, my neighbors don't know what I'm posting. I, I think everyone around me is a church going Southerner. I don't find that hard to believe. Like they would be appalled at my, uh, my left wing leanings. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are increasingly isolated even from the people we live around. And that doesn't mean can't be friendly and say hi and look, you hear all the, Oh, he was so normal. And, and then they came out with the stories with this guy that, Oh, he took care of his son and he could barely walk. And, he he was just a good man and this was kind of make believe for him i can see the argument that he didn't really mean it or that he he was just posting for the hell of it and there would never be any consequences and this is a fun game and I, i'll never have to actually suffer for it and i i really can believe that the shock that just comes over these people as it finally dawns on them that oh wait this is real life this is really happening i really threaten these feds and I really said all these terrible things, but it, it has been normalized saying these things, talking this way, treating law enforcement or really anyone who doesn't praise Donald Trump constantly as your mortal enemy is normal now. And, mm -hmm. and the people who do it the most are, are playing a game. They're playing for engagement. They're trying to keep upping their numbers, but eventually like the right set of circumstances come together. And like you said, Jared, this every few months, we just see somebody who kind of makes that final break with reality and reality finally catches up with them. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to totally get on board with this idea that like, well, he wasn't serious. I feel like when you aim a gun at mm -hmm. FBI agents, you you're serious now. Yeah. You've made a choice at that point. Pretty serious thing for me to think about is pointing a gun at somebody something I hope I never have to do. But right. I, I do kind of think of this stuff as like a form of, and and this is maybe like not polite to say, but like a, a type of like psychosis. It's like a, in a pure literal sense, not, and I, I don't use that like as a derogatory term, but I, as in like, there's a, a break from reality that happens here. Right. Um, you know, having some sort of semblance of reality, even if you're in a reality that's like in conflict with itself, like like the world's reality is today, you know, people argue about things. There are things like war. There is evil in the world. There's all kinds of the world's a weird, crazy place. It's also a beautiful place. Everything is everything. But when you break apart from that and you start to think the whole world is a lie or like everything is like aimed at you specifically or like you become the main character of mm -hmm. something in the right circumstances with the right pre-existing conditions, with the right stimuli from, you know, all kinds of terrible people, terrible online environments. Um, you know, that can lead a person to flip and yeah, act out like that. And I think part of what the internet does is it can make that process go, you know, a little bit quicker, but I think what it can also do a lot of the time. And like we've seen here, is hide it from other people. You know, presumably, unless someone's looking over my shoulder on the bus or something, when I'm, you know, scrolling around, killing time, waiting to, you know, get to the co-working space or whatever, uh, people don't know what I'm looking at. They don't know what I'm posting. They don't know what I'm reading or listening to. So this can happen to people who seem, you know, just as normal as the rest of us. But, you know, up top in the noggin, there's just like a completely different reality happening. And I think that's kind of hard for people to contend with, which is why we get people that come out after things like this and be like, I don't understand. He was a good dad. Uh -huh. He was a, right. you know, a nice neighbor and always took care of blah, blah, blah. All of that can be true. And also like a very severe or like 
crucial kind of break from reality can happen. Um, because thinking you're going to take on FBI or thinking like, I'm going to threaten to kill FBI agents. And then when they come to my house, I'm going to point a gun at them. If you think that's going to go any way besides you getting killed, then you're, you're not living on this planet. You're, you are mentally, I forget exactly what you said, Griffith, but like just, just in his own world. Right. 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 And it's like, you can think all you want to that they overreach. You can think all you want to that they're this awful thing in society but you cannot point a weapon at law enforcement of any type and not expect to have it go like you said the way it went we can feel really sorry for this guy that he got to the point where he made these choices but at the end of the day the the fbi spokesperson said that there was a weapon drawn on the agents when they came to his house to serve the warrant and at that point you've just made a really terrible choice and it's not going to go well when you make that choice. When you're that divorced from reality, whether it's, it's the FBI, it's the cops, it's you're out grocery shopping and you think you see something clearly he was going to put himself in some kind of situation where something like this was going to occur. And yeah, it does seem to happen in a vacuum, but you can't monitor everybody's, Post and everything we're doing online and it this can happen so quickly maybe there's like a sudden health scare maybe you're late on your rent or you have money problems or it, all of this stuff can really turn from a game to reality and in a short amount of time right and we we don't have those guardrails and the thing is if you're doing this on your own time you're doing this and no one else knows about it you know the man had family None of them apparently knew either. This is a case of like, nobody probably knew just how bad things were with this guy besides, you know, the people he was posting to and talking to on True Social and the moderators. Or they were basically one step behind him. So they didn't think it was weird. They didn't think it was anything out of the ordinary because they listen to Charlie Kirk every day or they, they're also on Truth Social. I mean, that's a lot of people consume this stuff every day and believe it now yeah and yeah i think it's gonna keep happening with increasing frequency you wish that wasn't the case but here we are but the good news no it's not good but the in sort of related news is the media is going to both sides everything that is happening in this country including hunter biden did you hear about Trump's Georgia indictment on TV? Well, not if you were watching Fox News last night. <laughs> yeah, I take it they were on the Hunter Biden story. They're absolutely on that. Isn't that amazing? They got that hog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the former president of the United States gets rung up on RICO charges. And this is what they can talk about. The evidence is glaring. Have you seen this man's penis? I... <laughs> How can you not have seen this man's penis? You've been on the internet in the last like two years paying attention to politics. I mean, of course you're going to see Hunter Biden's penis. That's well, even, just... even C-SPAN at this point, because MTG pulled it out. What was it? A few weeks ago, she had like the big poster board of Hunter Biden's dick because that's just what that's politics now. That's mm -hmm. politics. Now. Mm -hmm. Look at this man's penis. <laughs> Tell me he does not deserve to be in jail. <laughs> him and his father uh, mm -hmm. yeah they are just looking for something they've found what they think is an opening they think it's a way to get this guy into the news and you know never mind jared and ivanka never mind trump getting indicted along with 19 of his close compatriots it doesn't matter this is all we're going to talk about from here on until the election or somebody makes them shut up about it one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, the, the specifics of the Hunter Biden special prosecutor, David Weiss, who has been investigating Hunter since 2018, Joe Biden gets elected despite what you may have heard. He was elected, becomes president. He doesn't fire this guy because he's investigating his son. He keeps investigating him. And recently it seemed like there was going to be a plea deal Hunter was going to get no jail time. For whatever reason, the deal fell through. Now the same guy, David Weiss, is special prosecutor. And there were so many takes from people that I generally like and consider good reporters who 
just jumped straight to, oh, this is going to be a problem for Joe Biden. This is going to be a problem for him in his reelection. <laughs> and it, you can't help but feel like they want that. They want a horse race. They definitely want to see that kind of drama because it sells ads. It sells soap. And the more you can both sides of this thing, the more likely it is that people are going to tune in to some of these more mainstream networks because pretty much everybody who's not consuming that, all the people on the left, all the people on the right that are in their own sort of media echo chamber, they've all made up their own minds. Nobody's going to be changed one whit by that. The Trump people do not care that Trump was indicted for all of this stuff yesterday. It doesn't matter. This is the deep state out to get him. I didn't. I mean, his, his poll numbers will probably go up after this is over, sadly. And the same thing for a lot of the people on the left with Hunter Biden. There's nothing they can charge him with that's going to make anybody sit up and go, oh, well, maybe Joe was in on this somehow. Everybody's already decided how they feel about this. But horse races sell. So we're going to see more of this. I mean, I'm of the the scorching hot belief that like once you reach this level of power in society, there's no way you're not like a criminal. Like you, you probably have done illegal things and you probably should go to jail. Hunter mm-hmm. Biden has definitely done illegal things. Should he be exempt from consequences? Not really. But that's not really what this is about for Republicans. Nope. Donald Trump did illegal things. Should he be exempt from consequences? Definitely not. I say lock them all up. That's my chant. And that's why I'm running for president in 2024. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We just need a charismatic leader who agrees mm-hmm. that all of our enemies and the people we don't like should go to jail and then everything will be better. Right? Is yeah. That- that's the fix is if we put everyone in jail, then no one can bother us. <laughs> parody satire satire do you have a campaign manager already i'd love to talk to you about that i have to be careful with that because i i tend to talk like a little bit monotone so it, it, <laughs> people who don't know me like <laughs> <laughs> yeah jared is uh actually here to tell us he's quit his day job and um <laughs> he's gonna start managing some political campaigns <laughs> candidates tbd Seriously, though, it is just this is how it's going to be, I think, going forward. This is where we're at now in that they're trying, it seems, to do the right thing with the Hunter Biden investigation. He apparently had a plea deal which fell apart for reasons. And now they've appointed a special prosecutor. Biden didn't fire the special prosecutor. So it seems like they're at least trying to let the system do its work on this one. And to be clear, uh, I, I don't speak for Jared and I should let him speak for himself. But the thing that still gets me about all this is I just don't care if Hunter Biden goes to jail. It's fine. Send him no. to jail. Yeah, Not here. at all. Like, no. But prove to me that Joe Biden did anything and anything that you can prove and they can't. And they've had I mean, how many years now? Five years to find it. And they can't find it. And honestly, they've gotten so desperate that they're recycling old material. They're recycling that video of him in Ukraine saying that he fired the prosecutor, which was U.S. policy. He was he was just kind of bragging off the cuff, being Joe Biden, flexing his muscles. But they they've run out of ideas. So they're they're back to that because they don't have anything, but they don't need anything. If, if they don't have anything, they're just going to make something up. And James Comer, I swear to God, he comes out every day and he's like, the Bidens may have allegedly taken five million or 10 million. Or last I looked, they're at like, mm-hmm. right, like, <laughs> baby, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like 50 million now. It's, it's just it's monopoly money. But hey, it means their investigation has uncovered things, I uh-huh. guess. Things. Every day Joe Biden doesn't go to jail, like, that number goes up higher. Absolutely. And eventually they're going to find the magic laptop hard drive or the magic phone call transcript that everybody's going to turn around and say, ooh, okay, yeah, he really did it. Let's lock him up now. It's the virtual machine inside the laptop from hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Linux <laughs> instance that's running inside the laptop from hell. That- <laughs> See, he had a flash drive that he used to plug into it and boot the operating system that way. And we have that flash drive. And now we- Can you believe this thing had a CD-ROM drive? What year is it? It really does kind of say something, though, that they have nothing else. Like, there's going to be an election in a year 
and it's going to be Hunter Biden again. Mm -hmm. They don't have another kid or a, a niece or a nephew or Joe Biden's grandparents were Nazis or something. And I say that now I'm like, somebody's going to hear that yep. and go make it a thing. And I apologize in advance. But come on, man. What are you doing? It's so run of the mill Washington, D.C. swamp that no one actually wants to get rid of, even the people who want to drain it. Or what does DeSantis want to do? Does he want to kill it? Mm -hmm. He wants to kill mm -hmm. the deep state. And, yeah. you know, none of these people can run on the record. None of these people can run on, like, say, for instance, oh, let's talk about how much better life is for women in this country in the last several years. Let's talk about how women have so many more rights than they did six years ago. You know, they can't talk about anything that's actually happened policy wise. My favorite female influencer says women should not vote. So I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Pearl Davis. She's great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. We got, you got to get Pearl on the show. <sighs> uh, maybe when we finally maybe... have some ideological diversity. Uh -huh. here. I'm a uh, guy and I'm telling you to. That would probably work. Yeah. You guys are scared to debate. That's true. <laughs> Terrified. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> petrified to debate these people. Joining the show from stage left, Pearl Davis. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Just Nazi things. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I did want to bring up this story because I, I saw it going viral on social media. And it's one of those that it sounded like it might be too good to be true or too on narrative. So I didn't retweet it right at first. And then I read the stories and realized that it is as bad as it seems. So it's the story of a police raid on a local newspaper in Kansas and yeah, it looked bad. It got worse. And then the 98 year old woman died. Yeah. Um, according to the Associated Press, a small newspaper and police department in Kansas are at the center of a dispute over freedom of speech as the newspaper struggled Monday to publish its next edition days after police raided its office and the home of its owner and publisher. Officials with the Marion Police Department confiscated computers and cell phones from the publisher and staff of the Marion County Record in Friday's raid. On Monday, Kansas state authorities confirmed that they are also involved in a criminal probe of the newspaper over allegations that it allegedly illegally obtained and used personal information about a local business owner. Friday's raids have been widely condemned by press freedom watchdogs as a blatant violation of the U.S. Constitution's protection for a free press. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly called the raids, quote, concerning, unquote. An attorney for the newspaper deemed the searches and seizures illegal and said that the police department's action, quote, offends the constitutional protections that the founding fathers gave the free press. So how did this all happen? I think we should probably turn to Jared, who at least was a reporter, now more focused on research. But I think you know the ins and outs of what the police can and can't do. And it seems like there's a lot here that they should not have been allowed to do. Um, yeah, I'm kind of amazed that a judge, even like a, you know, off her rocker judge signed off on this. That was... I don't know. It's almost hard to have words for this, honestly. It's um, it's like a journalist's worst fear. It's like the government coming down and like ripping you apart. It's the kind of thing that like when you're learning to be a journalist and stuff, it's like this is what makes like press freedom in the U.S. awesome. Is you can say screw you to the government and the way that like libel laws are written and everything. Like you, you basically like cannot slander a president. It's like legally impossible. Because mm -hmm. they're the president. Like, you can do no damage to them with what you write. Like, like there's so much leeway. And then to have a police department come just, like, tear your paper apart and get away with it and get sanctioned by the government to do it, it's, like, it's horrifying. I feel like it would be enough to make any reporter just quit. Like, why would you try to rebuild there? You're obviously in a, a territory that's openly hostile to you, right? Can you think of any precursor to that here? I know obviously it happens in other places around the world, but is is there anything that pops to mind even in recent history like this? I mean, I've heard of individual reporters kind of getting picked on. FBI trying to shake down people for sources and, and stuff like that. Um, 
in national security world, this can happen sometimes. People get like documents they're really, really not supposed to get. The the government will hackle them. But generally, like even then, the the government tries to be like at least a little bit tactful and like being like, well, uh, this is like about something else. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and then they just do it anyway. But like, this is pretty in your face ugly and, and like certainly we've seen like police officers like corral and like even like beat and arrest journalists covering protests and stuff but this is just like this is wild i it's hard for me to like wrap my head around it because i read the story and it's just like you've got to be kidding me because this isn't even like I, I don't mean to speak ill of the kansas newspaper but like trying to look at the stories and stuff that this was supposedly about it's like you got to be kidding me this is like what what set off this de- police department to like raid a newspaper. You've got to be kidding me. So what exactly is it alleged that they were? I mean, this was something very minor that caused all of this. Can can one of you walk through the chain of circumstances that led this to get started? It seems like there was an event at the owner's bar. They asked the reporters to leave. They wouldn't leave. She kicked them out. Then it comes out that someone had given them information that the owner of that bar was driving without a license. She does not have a license because of drunk driving arrest. But there was apparently evidence that she had been driving her car without a license and she was chummy with the police and they were let either letting her get away with it, looking the other way. And the paper said they weren't going to report this. They said they thought they were being set up. So they didn't actually report it because they thought they were being set up and they were going to have to deal with the fallout of that. But apparently the owner of the bar said that they were engaged in illegal activity and stealing her identity and obtained this information through fraud. And so it went to the police and the police took it to the judge and the judge signed off on this raid. And and then it just happened. And this is one of the, the few instances the, the co-owner of the paper was the guy who operates it co-owns it is I think in his seventies and his mom was the, also the co-owner. She was 98 and she said this was essentially Hitler tactics. And it's the first time in a while that you see anybody talking about Hitler or comparing something to Hitler and you think, well, okay, here we, here we go. Yeah. (laughs) Here we go again. But you know, it is, it is. And we don't do this here. No. What gets me about this situation too, is like um, the owner of this paper, like they, yeah, they thought they were getting like set up with fake information from this like restaurant's owner. I think it was like her husband or something that they I don't know. Oh yeah, she was she's getting divorced, divorced or like yeah. getting divorced, yeah. And it's not like the paper was like, "Okay, cool, we're just not going to run a story," but the owner of the paper actually like went and tattled to the police, right? And was like, "Oh, we're hearing this stuff." And then the police are like, "Cool." And then they get a warrant and then like bust down the doors of this newspaper. So it's like, it's like, buddy, this paper is like on your side. What are you doing? Like, they're trying to help you. Right. And your buddy who owns the restaurant that you had a fundraiser that you kicked all the reporters out of. And the owner of the paper is still just like, oh, hey, guys, you might want to know about this. <laughs> bizarre. It is. It is really. And the thing I think that strikes me as the most bizarre about the situation is that if this restaurant, if this bar owner had a problem with the way this all got disseminated, isn't this a civil matter? How does this even become a criminal matter? It just doesn't seem like the kind of thing that the police even get called on. If you're in this situation and you don't like the information somebody else has printed about you, well, aren't there libel laws that cover this kind of thing? That is the crazy thing. Like, if you saw this on TV, if this was a shitty TV show that, you know, your grandparents watched, Blue Bloods. This was Blue Bloods. It would have been after something got published and it was, how dare they? But I don't know if there's more to this story. I don't I don't want to blame everything on Trump. But is this related to the continuous assaults on the press? And this is just looked at flippantly by some people. Yeah, right, right, right. Their offices take everything. And they literally took everything. Right. Hard drives and cell phones. 
I feel like the most charitable explanation I can come up with for the police department is like they're trying to figure out who's talking shit and they care about this paper so little that they're willing to just rip it to shreds to figure out like who is texting you. And that is incredibly shitty. And it's also the best explanation, like the most charitable explanation I can think of. The less charitable explanations I can think of are like a lot more horrifying to think about. Yeah, it's dark at that point. Very dark. Makes you really question if we're at a point where this is an acceptable tactic now. Because again, like you said, Jay, this just isn't something that generally happens in this country. We've reported on El Salvador. That's perfectly normal in El Salvador. When you criticize the, the president or the government, they go after you. This is something that does not in theory, happen in this country. And for this to start becoming something that gets normalized, boy, we're in some dangerous waters at that point. Well, if it's a big paper, if it's the New York Times, Washington Post, all the publications you've heard of, they've got the money to fight this and they'll win. But local mom and pop shops, local newspapers, this could very easily kill them. And yeah, maybe enough people will notice and they can win. But also people's attention span is not very long. So if this happens five times in the next year, I, I just, I think people will care less each time. And I don't know that it's likely because this is so unprecedented, but the fact that it happened at all should at least raise some red flags for people and think, okay, what, what could be next and how do we stop it? Yeah. And the answer for how do we stop it? Boy, that's, that's a really good question. What do you do when you're in those circumstances and all of a sudden you've got the police raiding you and seizing all of your devices? You know what we do? We put fearless journalists like Andy No on the case. <laughs> we whip up our concrete milkshakes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Lean back, crank our arm, and let it fly, baby. <laughs> the man who cannot tell a brain freeze from a TBI. I remember when he went on Joe Rogan and he tried to sell that as a TBI. And even Joe Rogan, even Mr. Ivermectin, who is a self proclaimed idiot, moron, even he looked at Andy like, is that really your final answer? Are you really, are you really going to go with TBI? Oh, yes, that's what happened. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was a pretty good impression. Yeah, no, that was, that was impressive. That, that was uh, like every time Andy tells a story of what happened to him, which to be clear, that wasn't good. I hate Andy as much as anybody. Be terrible to him, but you don't need to like punch him. That That no. doesn't actually like change anything or help anybody. But like every time Andy tells this story, it's like he comes closer and closer to death. It's like, <laughs> I was nearly killed by Antifa and I could barely hold my bowl of fruit. I was <laughs> spilling the fruit everywhere because my brain was split in half. <laughs> You've got that <laughs> accent down. That is impressive. That is very... I don't know. That was like a six or a seven. I don't know. That was... That's pretty good. We got to be careful because, you know, the possibility exists. He might file a lawsuit against us and that lawsuit might go a little better than the one that the jury didn't see it his way in Portland this week. You know, I'll take the publicity. I, I will. I don't I don't think he'll win. I don't think he's he's got very good arguments or lawyers. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> when the men on the Did Nothing Wrong podcast talked about my brain, it split in half once more, nearly killing me. <laughs> Sending me to the verge. Of oh, that poor, that poor man, <sighs> that poor man. He's just suffered so much. Won't, won't anybody think of the humanity of all of this? You know, he's bat in bad straits when he starts to go to the oh, the left are the real homophobes, and they're just mm -hmm. they're just excited because a gay man had to suffer through this. He has Dinesh D'Souza himself. Mm -hmm. He's Dinesh D'Souza, only you know, younger and supposedly. The millennial Dinesh D'Souza is probably where we're at with this guy. Just make yourself a target and see how much victimization you can get as a result of that. He had apparently sued several activists in Portland. He had also tried to file a RICO claim against Rose City Antifa, but 
the charge and defendant were dismissed from the case after it was determined that the group isn't an organized legal entity subject to being sued. The leader of Antifa is all around us. <laughs> is the the Antifa in the room with you right now, Andy? Uh, you no, know, every time he writes about an anti-fascist, it's a... Uh... His his new thing is like militant antifa leftist. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, militant. They're they're all militant. Some random account called like Cop Shitter Honor ninety two. It's like <laughs> I think Andy should be put in a blender. And he's like the militant uh, antifa organizing is creating deadly threats that are coming for me and my family. And it's like. Just a clown, man. This guy, this guy's just a clown. And then he claims to do anything adjacent to extremism just has made him my favorite person to like, just he, it's like stealing candy from children and just like ripping his claims apart. I don't know. He, he's so stupid, but he has a huge audience because mm-hmm. it's, he says what people want to hear, which is like, well, we're not the bad guys. Mm-hmm. They're the bad guys. There's this massive terrorist group out there called antifa and they operate in the shadows and they have cells in every major city and they're just waiting for the orders from soros to snap and take over everything and they collaborate with journalists so we Mm -hmm. have to put them on lists for research Mm -hmm. and even the day that the whole milkshake story went viral and oh yes it's it they're trying to kill him it was being spread that day by fake antifa accounts that were going around making this trend making it a bigger story and then andy gets pelted that day and uh, you know he he looks so sad and so so depressed but it was like the best day of his life because for once he had something kind of halfway real to sell which is more than he usually has yeah just a little bit of an aside but the like that like catchphrase like andy no gives kill list to adam waffen or whatever as somebody who like did reporting on like sort of that circumstance that happened i do feel like i need to at least set the record straight a little bit go for it so that claim is basically there was this like this guy named owen lenahan who is like prog dad prog dad Prog dad, yeah. He like fashions himself as like an anti extremism researcher. But if you know anything about this guy and what he's been doing on the internet, not exactly how I would describe him, hmm. right? Uh, a guy who has really spent a lot of time hanging out with some really, really shitty, shitty, racist, awful people. And, you know, today it's just like, well, I was just studying them. And then you like look at what he was doing. He's like, I don't think that's what you were doing, buddy. Um, hmm. I think you were one of them. Yeah, so he comes out, he he puts a study out that's a network analysis, basically, of like, okay, I've picked out X amount of Antifa accounts and a bunch of, like, journalist accounts, and I'm going to see who follows each other. Which, whatever, that can be interesting analysis, but you got to be, like, real careful about what you claim from right, that. Right, Because it, it shows you, like, a network of following that doesn't mean anything. For a long time, and I I only stopped doing this because I got bored of him, but like I followed Richard Spencer on Twitter for years, and mm-hmm. I got bored of Richard, so I just don't follow him, and I didn't think he was relevant anymore. Just tired of seeing his shit. But like, I was a reporter, and he was like a subject in the universe that I covered. Right. That does not mean that I collaborated with him, or that we had some kind of connection, or that I was like favorable to him or gentle towards him or working for his side or whatever. But that's like what Owen was trying to claim off this network map was like, look, these journalists follow these anti-fascist accounts. And guess what? None of them have written an article that's like Antifa is the biggest enemy facing the world. So, aha, we've got him. Andy is kind of the guy who gives this, this guy like his big boost and gets this thread going around. Red State writes it up. Quillette, where Andy was at the time, writes it up. So I wrote a little piece about it and like basically Owen's like thread and then the article that followed was just like a list of naughty journalists. And then somebody took like a chunk of that list, not the whole list, but a chunk of the list. They claim they today they like weren't inspired by the list, but 
if you look at how it went down at the time, that's obviously bullshit. Mm -hmm. And they made this video that was like, you know, sunset the media. Right. You know, it, it basically, you know, just listing these journalists and more or less implying that they should be killed. And this was posted on, uh, shit, I want to say it was Gab, blanking at the moment, but it's by this like Bull Patrol account, like, you know, Dylan, uh, Roof, super fan. Right. Type of account, you know, somebody that like extremism researchers were vaguely aware of. So it was like about that. But there's no reason to think that like Andy No was in connection with this Bull Patrol guy or like had a role in it. As somebody who like really loves to say terrible things about Andy No, I like to make sure that they're true. And that's like one thing that I see going around that like I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of. And it's unfortunate because there's like a million and one legitimate ways to criticize Andy for being a charlatan and a liar. But like, you know, it, it's so easy to hit. Why would you miss? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it became, like you said, more of a meme than anything else to right. go ahead and throw that out. The truth, obviously, as you just explained, is a lot more complicated about where all of this went, but it just became another way to give Andy kind of an out on this stuff to let him say, well, I never did anything like that. I've never heard of Adam Waffen. I don't know what they do. The idea that I would make kill lists for them is ludicrous. And the man doesn't need any additional credibility. Like you said, it would be good if people didn't somehow give him claims that were that easy to refute. We do know that what Colette well, let him go or said he was pursuing other opportunities shortly after this. So, yes, he uh, he has been relegated to the post millennials of the world where he belongs. And that that is perhaps suffering enough. Yeah. And if you want to talk about Bull Patrol, I mean, we can talk about the gentleman that was adjacent to Bull Patrol that Owen Linehan decided to interview in his short lived prog dad persona, a gentleman by the name of Paul Nealon. And Paul Nealon is the candidate who at one point was running against Paul Ryan for the Republican nomination for representative in Wisconsin. He claimed to have a list of Jews that were trying to stop him from getting there. And Owen Linehan did a 45 minute plus puff piece interview with this guy. So I don't think that's research, man. I, I don't either. Uh -uh. I don't take Owen Linehan seriously about this. I don't think, you know, dressing up like a fucking clown and being like lol racism rocks like mm -hmm. i don't think that's sorry um, maybe our methodologies are slightly different right mm. right the going and looking for groipers under a bridge was not his finest <laughs> hour but I'm not sure he's had too many fine hours in that persona and he really doesn't like to be reminded of any of that stuff he's deleted all of the videos from the internet he's deleted everything he could get his hands on fortunately it's all been archived but he's still published by the Federalist, and Andy is still out there. Yes, he's he's very angry that this this uh, case did not go his way. But like Jared said, people are so desperate for a false equivalency here that he will continue to exist out in the world and claim that the Antifa threat is looming. And I, I remember one of his posts recently that there was a train that was derailed. And he said th something about how this is why I always warn about the potential for Antifa to derail the trains and what the damage that they could cause. And then somebody asked him, like, oh, are you saying Antifa was involved in this? And he says, well, no, it, it's it's just a hypothetical. And then he deletes it. And that's that's this that's who this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. Just dishonest and just the most disingenuous quote unquote journalist out there but he's got like you said his audience and he's got a large number of people who unfortunately take this guy seriously and will tell you oh he's the only journalist who's speaking truth on the antifa thing and it's like pfft. okay well we didn't really talk about the lawsuit but i think with everything we've said uh it's maybe not a surprise he didn't win that thing <laughs> one might even say that he lost it and pretty poorly even though like some of the reporting that came out of that case like the lawyers for the defendants were like they were kind of being clowns too mm -hmm. and he still lost which is like incredible to me yeah just, he had nothing uh-huh 
Like that's the only way you lose that if your like defense lawyer is just like clowning around and being like, I am Antifa. Yeah. Yeah. Literally that's something that actually you got suck. said. You suck. You lost. You suck. <laughs> Nobody wants to Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. You can say whatever the fuck you want on social media, but take it to court and then we'll see. And he did. And here we are. Here we are indeed. Jared, thank you so much for coming on with us again. It's been too long. We're glad we got you to come on and talk with us about some of what's going on. It's great to see, talk to you again. Hopefully everything's good for you and we will hopefully talk to you again soon. Yeah. Thanks for having me on and, uh, you know, posting through it ran. So did nothing wrong. Could run. Right. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck with your uh, ghillie suit cycling. Hope, uh -huh. it, hope it goes well. Yeah. We really, really are out here, you know, praying for your safety. Make sure that, you know, you don't see any cars and the cars don't see you and all that. It's just the only way to stay safe. It's, Indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. Indeed. You well, gotta hide from the vehicles. Yeah. Those globalists are everywhere. So he's, he's just taking the precautions. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Hey. Yeah. Take care, guys. Really appreciate it, Jared. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Did Nothing Wrong podcast. If you want to hear more, you can find us on the web at didnothingwrongpod.com. Please make sure you subscribe to get our content straight into your inbox. You can also follow us on Twitter at James, the word for, and the letter M, all one word, and Grizza BJJ, G-R-Z-A-B-J-J, as well as DNW Pod. We're extremely grateful for paid subscriptions and donations that allow us to keep doing this important work. Thanks, and remember, everyone mentioned did nothing wrong.